I think Nobu is a culinary genius. Nobu Matsuhisa puts a global spin on Japanese food. I like to say Nobu style food. It sort of tickles the tongue. The sushi chef to the stars has become a star himself. I mean, he's simpatico, as you would say. He's got a, a, a good personality. We get around, so that, that helps. To Nobu. He loves being more important than the most important celebrity, which he is. He set the bar very high. I tried to um, the suicides. Kitchen is my temple. You know, I have to be like a respect for the this space. When Chef Nobu comes to town, Tokyo that is, it's an event at his restaurant. We call it Nobu Week. The whole restaurant becomes livelier than usual. I'm sure every one of our staff feels the power Nobu brings to the restaurant. They refer to him as Oya-san, that's father figure in Japanese. My team is like my family. All the people walk around me, I say it's my family. And what a family it is. 2,000 employees in more than 20 restaurants around the world. Nobu himself holds the number four spot on the Forbes list of top earning chefs. He's also known as chef to the stars. He even has some as business partners. The food was just special. No other way to say it, put it, that was it. It's the most simple and beautiful sushi that I can spot out in a crowd of a hundred sushis, I can say, ah, uh, dads. I think Nobu, as a chef, has redefined Japanese cooking in, in America and quite frankly in the world. Nobu enlarged the view of Japanese food because of his Peruvian background uh, and Argentine experience. Yes, that is Nobu speaking Spanish. He brings a Latin American flair to his cuisine, which has helped set his sushi apart. His ceviche is incredible, his squid pasta is amazing. I mean, there's just a parade of amazing, amazing Nobu dishes. The plate is like my canvas, you know, that's why I like to use the white plates. So first introduction, wow, it's beautiful. Then it's tasty, wow, this is great. So uh, maybe after five minutes, it's my paint is just gone because empty plates. But this moment is most happy moment because nothing is left over on the plates. So they come to me, Nobu, thank you very much. No, no, I, like, I have to be saying thank you to you because you make reservations, you come to the restaurant, you spend the money. Nobu doesn't take anything for granted. He's learned the hard way that life has many twists. Nobuyaki Matsuhisa was born north of Tokyo in 1949, the youngest of four children. His relationship with food began early, thanks to his mother. My mother it's never buy food from the uh, supermarket, like a convenience store. Always it's a handmade. It's maybe my mother is my mentor, still. Nobu also looked up to his father. He was a lumber merchant who traveled to exotic places. But when Nobu was only seven years old, tragedy struck. His father was killed in a motorcycle accident. So when my, my father passed away, Always, I was so sad because a friend of mine had the old fathers, right? So playing the baseball together and going to the, the zoo together and the driving together, but I don't have any of the fathers. So 
So first opening the door, opening the sliding door, it's like already I feel the energies. This is wow. I never had this kind of food before. His young mind was made up. He would become a master sushi chef. So after high school, he apprenticed with a man who would make that happen, his mentor, Chef Nakani. What I learned from him, maybe a lot of patience, and of course is technically how to choose fresh fish, how to prep to the fish, and how to cook rice, how to talk to the peoples. After seven years apprenticing, Nobu had earned the position of top chef. He caught the attention of a customer who wanted to open a new sushi restaurant in Peru. He's uh, like uh, the talking, the drinking, the eating, and always talking about the Peru. He wanted Nobu to be his partner there, but one thing was holding Nobu back. He had begun dating a woman who dined at the restaurant, and he didn't want to leave without her. His face looks very pure, and not only face, his heart, heart was pure. We dating together, so after that I decided to go to the Peru, so we marry. I'm so happy to marry with him. Without him, nobody else for me. Shortly after their wedding, the couple headed to Peru. We loved each other, so I go anywhere he goes. Like I was young, I never afraid about the challenge. I like to see another countries. I like to present the sushi culture, present to another country. It was a very brave move for the 24-year-old Nobu. He was starting from scratch, didn't speak a word of Spanish, and was opening a new restaurant. There were new techniques to learn, new ingredients. Here, sashimi was called ceviche. You know, in Japan, sashimi eat soy sauce and wasabi. But in the Peru, it's like the marinated lemon juice and the cilantro, the garlic, and the chili paste. Nobu was facing one of the toughest cultural adjustments of his life, and he was about to have a showdown with his partner. Nobu Matsuhisa and his wife Yoko are visiting their Buddhist temple in downtown Tokyo. It's a national holiday, a day to pay respect to the elderly. Whenever he's back in his beloved Japan, Nobu takes the opportunity to talk with his monk. It's nobody perfect. You know, sometimes I need advice from somebody. I have a lot of employee, but sometimes I have Nobody, it's, I cannot talk to any of my problems. So he's like a, my life advisor. It can be lonely at the top. Nobu is at the helm of a huge restaurant empire and the stress can be overwhelming, but he knows he's the maker of his own destiny. Back in 1976, Nobu and Yoko had been in Peru for three years. During this time, their daughter Yunko was born. Now I have the new babies, it means new family. I was very happy. But not so happy at the restaurant. It was a popular success, but Nobu's Peruvian business partner wanted to start cutting costs, and that wasn't Nobu's way. Always a chef is looking for the best qualities, but uh, sometimes investor, hey Nobu, don't use this. You know, this is too expensive. It's don't buy this, not anymore, because it's too expensive. We have to make more profit. So on principle, Nobu left the restaurant and Peru. With Yoko and his young daughter, he then took a job in Argentina. But his luck wasn't any better there. Sushi wasn't a big seller in Buenos Aires. It's at that time it's Argentina, and most people eat steak and the pasta because a lot of uh, Italian the, the immigrant there. After only a year, Nobu took his family back to Japan. They were awaiting the birth of his second daughter, Yoshiko. 
but it was not a happy time in Nobu's career. I'm not success. I also feel bad, but I like to try challenge so one more time to go to another country. Once again, he needed the support of his wife. Yoko, so do me my favor. Please give me chance one more time to go to um, another country. I had to obey him where he went, anywhere he went. That turned out to be Alaska, a great source of fresh fish. Nobu got an offer to open a sushi restaurant in Anchorage called Kioi. Like um, October, it's opening restaurant. Already start the cold, start the snowing. Then the grand opening and a lot of peoples and the good foods, you know, and it was a success. The restaurant had been open less than two months. Nobu took his first day off. Then he got a phone call from his partner. The restaurant was on fire. Already talking with him, I hear a fire, car silence. Sounds like, wow, it's true or it's real? The from far away, I saw big fire. Then see the smoke, it wasn't a joke. Then very big fires, um, you know, I, I cannot think about anything. Construction had been rushed to open before the bad weather started. It was an electrical fire. The restaurant burned to the ground. I was so shocked and, you know, I cannot think about anything. I cannot drink. Of course, I cannot eat. The shame was too much for Nobu to bear. He even contemplated taking his own life. I tried to um, the suicide, so which way is the best way, you know, but even this time, I, I cannot think about the family. Always thinking about myself. It's very hard. It couldn't, like, a, like, couldn't breathe. Tired. So depressed. Especially my wife says, always, it's, it's okay. It's okay. Um, okay. Okay. So, I, I had to be strong as a wife, as a mother, women should be strong. Okay, thank you. Okay, I try my best. I'm gonna try one more time. After the fire, Nobu never took anything for granted again. Nobu shops at Tokyo's famous Tsukiji Fish Market. I went to the fish market almost all over the world. Uh, Tokyo is the best quality, it's a lot of variations, you know, exciting, and this is the best fish market. It's hard to imagine a fish market feeling like home, but it does to Nobu. A little bit of slimy, it means fresh. Still people know me, but nothing is special. Hey, how are you? Like a, Exactly, it's like 40 years ago. It's the same pill. Around the corner from the fish market is where Nobu bought his first knife. His mother saw so sit down here, always sleepy here. I came surprised to see him today. He was exactly like his mother, the sleepy lady. I wake up to him. A far less happy memory still haunts Nobu. In 1977, his first restaurant, one where he actually had ownership, burned to the ground. Not only was Nobu in massive debt, he was a broken man. It's, I have family, I have to make money, I have to make the living, but I lost everything. 
Nobu had to borrow $500 to buy plane tickets for his family back to Japan. But there he felt disgraced, and after just one week, he accepted an invitation from a friend in the United States. I went to Los Angeles to visit to a friend of mine, like a like runaway. Nobu found a job working at a small sushi restaurant in LA. Yoko and his daughters soon joined him, and he eventually worked his way out of debt. Then in 1987, more than nine years after the Alaska fire, Nobu was finally ready to open another restaurant, Matsuhisa, in Beverly Hills. Finally, I own my restaurant 100%, 100%. I have my own business, nobody partner, I'm chef, anything I can buy, nobody bother me to don't buy this. Matsuhisa was a success from day one, in part, because of the ecstatic review of an L.A. food writer. That night I went home and I started calling every journalist I know in Los Angeles and said there's a world-class food experience happening on La Cienega Boulevard. You must go. Two weeks later, Nobu was so jammed you couldn't get into the restaurant. Practically overnight, Nobu's luck had finally turned around. One of Matsuhisa's many customers that first year was Robert De Niro. I was used to traditional Japanese food, which is great, but this was just something different. So he likes food. The so one day, he asked me to uh, open a restaurant together in the New York City. Japanese food, um, as I remember, has always been popular in New York, but this was just carrying it to another level, another uh, another level. Just, I, I just didn't see how it wouldn't work. But Nobu was still gun shy after the disaster in Alaska. Matsuhisa is a new restaurant. I don't want to back like Alaska. I don't want to lose money, you know, because for me, fear was too quick to like an opening restaurant. No, I didn't expect him to say, yeah, sure. I just said, if you're ever interested in coming to New York and opening a, a restaurant, let me know. For the next few years, Nobu's reputation and confidence grew. Food and Wine named him one of America's 10 best chefs, and the New York Times called Matsuhisa one of the top restaurants in the world. So Robert De Niro, four years after his first attempt, called Nobu again. I was very surprised because, you know, he was waiting for me. No, I think he was ready then, and, and uh, so it's that simple. It means okay, you know, I can trust this guy. I can trust him. Nobu New York opened in 1994. Nobu the chef was building an empire when he once questioned whether his career would ever get off the ground. From his magnificent hilltop perch in Los Angeles, Nobu nurses his soul. He completes his morning stretches without fail. His 60-year-old body moves with the ease of one half that age. After stretch, so I feel like a 25 years old. This is another secret to Nobu's success. Just as he balances the delicate flavors of his sushi, Nobu balances the demands in his life. So peaceful, stretch, swimming. So already start the day after tomorrow. I have to go to Hawaii, to New York, London, Tokyo. Oh, I miss my home. I think he spends more time on the plane as he more than he does in his own bed at home. Another source of calm for Nobu may seem unusual. It's his gravesite in downtown Tokyo. But in a way, it's a perfect escape. A reminder that you only live once. And when your luck's down, just pick it up. But the Alaska fire still haunts Nobu to this day. Maybe still, maybe some parts from here, like I still have memory to the Alaska. 
Maybe he's still a little bit afraid about like a little slow down. Maybe I'm maybe like a little bit I have to still keep going. I want him to slow down, but I think it's not his style. Mm. sees everybody being happy, uh, I think that's his number one kind of drive, to keep on doing what he does, but always adding a different layer to it. His motivation is that family of his, not just Yoko and his daughters, but the bigger one, his restaurant empire, and all those people within it. To me, the restaurants are like ex an extended family, and he views it that way, thinks of it that way, feels about it that way. I'm getting old, but still, that young generation is growing from the nobles' family. I have to support to them, and always generations, it's older, it comes the young ones, and uh, come big ones. So I cannot stop to the work. My favorite spice is wasabi. My favorite junk food, French fry. If I'm not a sushi chef, baseball players I like to do. My favorite fish is a white fish. I never taste again snake. I want to be grandfather from my daughters. 